Welcome to the DK Kim Foundation lecture series offered by the Center for Asian Business at Loyola Marymount University in Los Angeles, California. This program is funded by a grant from the DK Kim Foundation in Ontario, California. The Ninja, born of a 400-year-old tradition, trained in the most exquisite subtleties of combat. The Ninja must be as wise as he is all-powerful. Next 20 minutes or so, I'd like to talk about my background. How many people know my background? Are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> okay. How many people do you know? Okay. I was born in 1948 in Tokyo, Japan. It's a small city. I mean, right now it's a big city. But when I was born, after World War II, 1948, I don't have any food to eat. And my family, my father was a fisherman. And my grandfather is the same, fisherman. We don't have any, too much food to eat. Even the three meals, sometimes we cannot have it. Only one meal, and very hard. And when I was five years old, I got, as uh, Mr. Saito told you about my sickness, I have a small hole in my lung. So I cannot breathe. Even I cannot walk straight. And I sweat. My eyes turn to red. And unfortunately, my father and my, my mother, they don't have any money. So what they did, they took me to the nearest karate studio in Tokyo and make me take a karate so getting better. I don't understand that, that, this concept. OK, instead of going to the hospital, going to karate studio, it's no joking. When I was five years old. I don't know anything about it. I wasn't interested in karate at all. I was so scared because the people who are taking martial art, they are so big and mean face and all over, like almost Yakuza tattoo. Oh my God. I am the only one person, five years old, I am the only one going to karate studio, open the doors, and I was shocked. So mean dude, much meaner than these guys. Wow, I don't know what to do. 
And I was crying, and my, and my chest is hot, and my eyes are so red. But my mother, she doesn't have me too much money, but she opened the wallet and put uh, about $10 for me to take a martial art. This is my first step. Changed the whole of my life. And after that, uh, once a week, because I cannot take three times a week, because my body was so weak. So they have, I mean, teacher was asking me to take a three times a week. I said, no way. Even once a week, and only how many minutes? 15 minutes. Because more than 15 minutes, my eyes become, I mean, turn to red, and I cannot move. Breathing so hard, I don't know what to do. And, but the little by little, by the time I became eight years old, my body getting stronger. And one day, my mother took me to the hospital to check. And doctor said, what kind of medicine are you taking? Are you taking secret Chinese medicine? What happened to your body getting much better when I was eight years old? I couldn't believe it. This is kind of miracle, but this is the truth. Then. When I was young, as you have uh, here in the United States, football or basketball, baseball, but baseball was so big in Japan. So even though my body was so weak, but I took baseball. And when I was going to high school, one very famous high school team scouted me. So I went to very famous baseball school in Tokyo. It's called Nichidai Sanko, uh, the third school in a uh, very, very famous school. And I was almost going to professional baseball player because I was scouted from regular high school to university. Of course, no test. And I, got, I was scouted. And even the professional, you know, their team scouted me. And I want to play baseball or not. Well, Again, life is very funny. It's not under my control. Maybe for the, under the God. And I decided not to go to baseball. And I tried to come to the United States. That was 1968, when I, I was 19 years old. Why? Because I watched a mom movie. No, one TV show called Green Hornet. Right. <laughs> By who? No Shokosugi, but Bruce Lee. I was watching Green Hornet on a big screen. My God, this is Asian guys in Hollywood. It's not Hong Kong movie. I'm not, nothing to do with the Hong Kong movie or time, but I'm telling you. It's a Hollywood movie. His name was uh, Kato. Real name is Kato. You know, pronunciation is something wrong. OK, Kato is American way. Kato is the right way to pronounce, all right? OK, so you can tell your friend, oh, that's Kato. No, 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 it's a Kato. It's a, he's a, he was a driver. And he was doing so much action. I was so amazed. Well, someday, definitely, I'm going to come to the United States. And I'm going to seek my future as an actor. It's a big, you know, I mean, wow. Everybody want to be an actor or actress, I know, become famous. But that's what, when I was 19 years old. Then I took two examination, entrance examination for university in Japan. Fairly enough, I failed twice. And one year, I couldn't take it, so wait, I go to another school, not real school, but uh, for the uh, taking examination school, you know, like, uh, like almost uh, uh, every high school student, college here, but everybody can go to some school anyway. But in Japan, it's very, very tough. It's go to big high school, I mean, very, I mean, famous, well-known school, you have to study hard. But I couldn't make it twice. And do you know what I'm thinking? I was thinking. I gave up my baseball, and by that time I was a black belt, but I gave up my karate, and I tried to come to the United States, but before that, I failed the university entrance examination twice in a row. 
So I decided when I was 18 years old, no 19, 18 years old, I decided to commit suicide. Well, not too many people know that about that. I almost did commit suicide. Nearby my uh, house, there is one river. And uh, I cannot go straight because my father was a fisherman and I know how to swim. So what I, I was doing is I get a heavy stone and with rope and put in my body and I try to commit suicide from my, uh, uh, you know, nearby my house. Jump into the water. But lucky or unlucky, I have two sisters, by the way. No brothers, only two sisters, two elder sisters. One of the sisters told me that you should go to the United States. Or you should go to America. Do you know what? What she was saying, maybe my future is not in Japan. Maybe you should go to the U.S., try to seek your dream. Maybe something there. So when I was 19 years old, I get $120. $120, no, $120,000, only $120. Even though, gee, 40, uh, close to 50 years ago, but still 120, little. One dollar equals 360 yen. Now, one dollar equals about 100, 105 yen, but 360 yen. And only $120 I have, because my family, they don't have any money. And my sister borrowed the money from my parents or go relatives, and they gave me the one-way ticket to the U.S. No return ticket because they cannot afford it. So when I was 19 years old, uh, 1968, I think May 28th, I still remember, May 28th, I came to the United States first. But as a no student, as a no actor, but as a tourist. I was a tourist because look around and which school is good for me and easy to enter, no hard. So I was looking around and I went to English school in Los Angeles. Used to be called Cambridge, uh, Cambridge Adult School. Maybe you don't know anybody. At my age, nobody. Cambridge Adult School. And I studied about six months. Then Lucky enough, I don't know right now, but used to be from regular visa, tourist, to exchange, change to student visa. Then, within the six months, I get a student visa. My God, maybe I have a chance to go to university. And took a TOEFL test, test of, test of English at the second language, you know, TOEFL test. And I passed. Wow, unbelievable. And where I, well, I went to Pasadena City College. Uh, because uh, city college, uh, you, uh, you know, I mean, I have uh, two boys and one, uh, one daughter. And the one boy, uh, <coughs> I hate to tell you, but uh, went to different school, very close to here, but uh, Pepperdine. Pepperdine is for the university. Pepperdine, you know. <laughs> and another one went to uh, uh, Nevada, Las Vegas. She was uh, playing golf, so she got a scholarship, a half scholarship, and play golf. and. Uh, uh, anyway, when I was there, I mean, so I don't know because I don't have any, my family doesn't have any money. But finally, I get the student visa. I didn't expect so easily to get it. Right now, I don't think so. Very hard. Because think about 50 years ago, and the student could walk. So Pasadena City College, it's great. And the quarter, I mean, it's a semester, right? So. Summer, I was working so hard from morning to night, about five or six jobs, and tried to get all the money I could do it and go to school. But PCC was very easy. But uh, I transferred to Cal State Los Angeles. Uh, that's a hell. I mean, no. I mean, God. <laughs> so expensive and so quick quarter system. It's no semester. And I was working summer, but no way, because students, foreign students, were so expensive. I mean, I cannot afford it because my parents, they said they're going to support, but unfortunately, they couldn't because they didn't have any money. Easy enough. So I have to work hard summer from morning to night, every day, about two to three hours, and four or five jobs every day. But I couldn't do it. 
And I tried, you know, calcite for two and a half years, but I couldn't do it. It's my uh, biggest regret I have right now. But why became movie star? That's a different story. Now I'm going to tell you why. During, because I wanted to be a Bruce Lee. No, I wanted to be a movie star, like Bruce Lee, if I could. That's why I came to the United States. But not so easy. And when I went to PCC, Personal City College, I decided at the side job, I opened up karate studio with my friend. He's, uh, he has a citizenship from US, so uh, he asked me to teach, you know, part-time, time to time. And PCC, I was teaching. Then, lunchtime, I was asking all students, you know, I know how to do martial art, so if you learn from me, I can teach you. And one day, we have about 200 students, PCC. Oh my God, because of, not me, because of Bruce Lee was famous. So there want to be a Kung Fu, oh no Kung Fu, it's Karate, Japanese style, but almost same, don't worry about it, you're going to be very good strong. You know, Bruce Lee, he's a great movie star, but me, oh God, you don't believe how strong I am. I'm almost BS, but anyway, then one of my students, and from PCC to regular studio, I decided to open up regular studio, but a student, bit, I can't. So one of my best friend, he has a citizenship, he opened up his show, I want to sponsor you, so can't you walk for my studio? That's my studio start. And when I opened up, I was expe expecting from beginning two to 300 students. But do you know how many people came? One people. <laughs> Wait a minute. What a difference. It's a school. It's much easier to get all the students together. But regular karate studio, it's very tough. Then about six months, we have only 10, stu 10 students. And one of the students, about seven or eight years old, he asked me, Mr. Shoko Sugi, you, you have a black belt, right? I, I said, yes, of course. That's why I'm teaching you. Then how strong are you? What do you mean, how strong are you? I'm black belt, very strong. Then why don't you compete with all American people in the tournament? Then I found out, this is the way United States, America. If you are strong, you're going to go for it. And you're going to show yourself. This is the first time I learned, OK, if I have a skill, I should try it. And during Pasadena City College and the Carol State Los Angeles, I went to so many tournaments, uh, about uh, close to 200 some tournament, and I won about 660 some trophies as a fighter, martial art, nothing to do with the movie. Do you know why? Because I need the money to go to school. <laughs> no, because of becoming, forget about Bruce Lee becoming famous, okay? Because so far, I need the money to go to school. So I have a studio, I mean, I can teach under the, the, the owner of my friend. I can teach, more students come, so for me, easy to go to school. Then, one day, I found out, how can I become a movie star? That time, about 5, 50, almost 50, 45 to yeah, 48 years ago, not so many Asian people. Now, so many Asian. I'm glad. I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm very happy to be there. But that time, not so many. So I took a picture. One of the students, I asked them. He's a photographer. So OK. I have 660 trophies all together put here. Oh, you won't be able to put everything in the one picture, 663 trophies. Okay, there are about 200 trophies. And in front of the trophy, I'm going to make a pause. So you take a good picture. And do you know what I did? I took those picture. I can make a print and went to all the studios, 20th Century Fox, MGM, Warner Brothers, Universal, Stu uh, Universal, no studio. I mean, Universal. All around there, Shoko, I sell myself. Take a picture, and uh, Xerox said, Shoko Sugi, very strong, number one. By that time, I was one of the best three in the United States fighter. So a lot of people, martial artists knows, 
Well, uh, he's very big as a Japanese, you know, six one, yeah, unbelievable, you know. I mean, all Japanese are small, but he's tall and bigger than me do, you know. You don't want to fight with him. Everyone knows, if I go to a tournament, some people, some black belt, they're going to get out, you know. I, they don't want to fight again. Because always I get so many trophies. So I decide, I took my poster and Xerox and to the Universal, I mean, to Warner Brothers, they said no. We don't need it. We don't need an AGM. We don't need a, any martial artist. So far, we don't. It's not popular that time. Bruce Lee was uh, popular, but except Bruce Lee, not so many uh, uh, AGM fighters, AGM actors. Of course, Mako was there, few people, but nothing to do with martial art. Then what's the best way to do? What's the best way to become well-known? Then I thought about it. Okay. I was asking from beginning to be the lead. It's impossible to get the lead. Then I should be easiest in the circle of movie industry. The what's the easiest one you think in the movie industry? What's the easiest one to get in? Backline, yes sir, yes sir. I became background, no for the main guys, but extra. That time, one day only $10, close to $10, 12 hours, more than 14 hours, sometimes 18 hours, so cold, you know. 200 people, 300 people just standing up there for the extra. But I didn't get every day, about three times a month, or two, sometimes four times a month. But then, this is the first step I get to into the business. I was expecting I'm going to be a lead because since I was so strong, so I should be the lead, main guys. But I couldn't do it. So I was from the bottom, extra. And do you know, I promised, now I'm divorced. I mean, 10 years ago I divorced, but my ex-wife was Chinese. Uh, and I, I, uh, uh, promised her, you know, if I graduate uh, university or not graduate, I couldn't do it, then anyway, I give up my uh, study, then I'm going to get married. So, before I go to extra, I get married. That's 1972 oh, or three. I forgot, sorry. But anyway, I get married with her. And I got uh, three kids, as, you, uh, as I told you, two boys and one girl. But that time, I have to support my family and my wife too, I promise. But extra, three times a week, I mean three times a month, $10, you cannot support. So I did about four, five jobs. From here, this paid good, this restaurant paid good, and this extra for parking lot. I did all kinds of jobs support. And I was waiting when I can be a superstar like Bruce Lee. Well, I have a chance. But unfortunately, no. I did eight years. How many people knows? Before I make a first movie, Enter the Ninja, I did eight years extra. Eight years. Usually extra, if you do two years, you don't want to do it anymore. Because so tired and so frustrated. And some big people, big star, they don't care about the extra. And the director, uh, you know, first AD, second day, they don't care. Hey, from here to here, oh, about 200 people come together. <laughs> they don't care the name. I don't know nowadays. But that time, extra is extra. They don't care about it. So when I was watching, even the extra, I thought maybe this is the time I should learn how to shoot a movie. And since I'm waiting and I'm with a big star, someday, and I see the trailer, of the big star, they have a big trailer. Someday I'm gonna get this trailer, I'm gonna be in it. I was thinking, and eight years, by that time my uh, wife, ex-wife, gave up me. You said two years, then you're gonna get a good job. But I was waiting eight years, still you don't have any chance to become famous. And you are doing nothing but the extra job, you don't have enough money. Then, 1981, I have a chance 
one of the six stuntmen go to Philippines. Philippines to make a movie called Enter the Ninja. We don't call it Enter the Ninja. That time, Dance of Death. One of my friends, his name is Mike Storm. He was the lead American guy. And he wrote a screenplay, so-called Dance of Death, with his friend. That's about ninja movies. And we went to the Philippines. I am the one of the six. I was doing extra. But I became a stuntman, one of six. I went to the Philippines because I know a lot of ninja stuff. Then, first day shooting, the leading guys, Michael Storm, was fired. I was so shocked. Wow. Leading guys. He wrote a screenplay with the other guys. He was fired because he was arguing with the producer and uh, I don't know his acting wise. I have no idea. I don't want to, to make a comment about it because I don't know really. You know, but between uh, uh, Michael and the producer and he was fired. But uh, he stayed with the uh, choreographer for the Enter the Ninja. But the second day, Second day is my turn to be on the screen, big screen. I was waiting eight years. Wow. But I called my ex-wife to US from Philippines. Do you know what? Maybe I'm gonna get fired tomorrow. <laughs> because first day, our hero, the leading guys got fired. And next day, producer called me and my action and I did everything okay, but producer and the director asked me to go to their room. That time I felt rah, really shocked. I really get fired. So before I get fired, I call my wife in US and I'm coming home tomorrow by Philippine Airline. I make a reservation first, and, but thank you, you know, I wanna give up. Because at 80, I was doing extra. Finally, I think I get the chance to do some movie. But first day shooting, leading guys get fired. And second day, producer and director called me to go to his room. I mean, definitely I'm going to get fired. I was so scared. He said, come, come to my room, 7 o'clock. Come to our room, you know, my office, 7. I was there at 7.30, because 30 minutes, I don't know what, oh God. I was doing 80 extra, you know, but I was working so hard for this day. And today, fire, I have no way to go. Then I went to uh, the office, and the producer, first thing, I'll send a knock. Can I come in? Sure. I told you 7 o'clock. Now, do you know what time? 7.30. What did you do? Whoa, I got fired. Really, I get nothing but the fire. I don't care about anything, you know. I get the fire. Oh, yes, my dream is over. Today, that's it. The end. The end. Oh, God. Boy, I was working so hard to get this point. But this is it. So, but I got to go. So, I went to office. Then, suddenly, producer said, so, I know, he knows Bruce Lee. He met Bruce Lee, and he came to our office once. He's small, but you are six one. But the Japanese very tall, and I saw your action. But six one, you move so quick. I wasn't expecting you move so quick. So from stuntman, from tomorrow you're gonna be a number two bidding. I'm gonna make you the main bad guys. That's the enter the ninja. Then as soon as finish, they call me to the Hollywood office, and I want to make a movie with you. My God, I'm going to be a leading role. That's a revenge of the ninja. That hit all over the world by MGM. But really doesn't know the world. What's going on? Well, I have to stop pretty soon, but I tell you why. Why I did my past and my fail, and I couldn't do well, my body was so sick when I was in Japan. Now, this is the things I want to try to tell you. The main reason I reveal myself, because I want you to know that. In the world, how many people are around in the world? Do you know? In this world, 
How many people are there? What? 10 million. More than 10 million, I think. But anyway, eh? billion, one billion? Seven billion. Yeah, but I don't know the number, sorry. <laughs> the main reason I was asking you, is there any same person, you and another person, exactly the same as you? There's no. Maybe twin, yes, closer. But means each one of you has an opportunity and the power, something you can do and other people cannot do it. That's why I want you to seek yourself and find out. You know, someone said, some very famous people say, genius is a 1% of inspiration and 99% of perspiration. Someone said, I try to bring up the same kind word. But anyway, working hard yourself and try to seek yourself. You can get to something more than you can expect it. And individuality, yourself, yourself. You are more than anybody else. Don't think, oh, he's better than me. Maybe you are better than him, something else. So seek yourself. This is very, very important. I try everything I could. And I stick to one thing, extra, eight years. The paid off. If I give up once there, I didn't have any chance to be here today or as an actor. Don't give up. And I'm going to give you last word. No, no quote. I'm not famous people. I'm not uh, well educated. But I'm going to give you one. No pain, no gain. No, 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 no. This is it. No pain, no gain. No dream, no life. Please remember that. Thank you. What a story. This is the individual who plays the most dangerous ninja in the world. <laughs> and as you can see, he's humble and down to earth. I remember when a Ninja Assassin came out, he invited me to the premiere and wanted my two boys who were 10 years old and 12 years old at the time to go watch it. And my wife had a cow. She says, that movie is rated R. They are not going to see that movie. Um, but he says, you know what? I'm going to be sitting right next to them. I die in the movie. They're going to see that I'm alive and everything will be fine. So we went to go see it. But uh, I wanted to mention after the movie, everybody at the premiere, um, Groman's Chinese Theater, uh, the actors signed autograph. Sho Kusugi stayed for two hours until the last person who wanted an autograph uh, was able to meet him. And that's the kind of individual he is. Uh, he's there for the people. Now I want to ask um, everybody in the audience, how many people take martial arts? Yeah, good number. You, right there, right? Uh oh, <laughs> Professor Pack, what kind? Taekwondo and Judo, that's great. Well, I wanted to tell you that, as you probably know, everybody who practices martial arts, one of the distinguishing features of martial arts is a code of conduct. Is that true? It's something that separates martial arts from other sports, other disciplines. It's a conduct, it's a philosophy that we believe in. Uh, Hapkido, Taekwondo, no matter what you take, they have their own specific philosophy. And a lot of those codes or edicts uh, were derived from elements of the universe or in nature, and they go back thousands and thousands of years to other countries like Asia, China, uh, India, and it's a code. It's a technique or a philosophy that was garnered by martial artists at the time to strengthen your body, to prepare you for battle, to make you uh, strong of mind. And it also had another element to it that merged body and soul so that when you execute these techniques, you can be as one and execute these techniques with fluid. Kind of like the concept of the force with Jedi Knights, you know? And I really believe when I saw some of those movies that that concept of the force was borrowed from martial arts. Um, ninjutsu though, is an art of itself, in and of itself, even though a lot of people haven't heard of it. And it has its own code as well. 
And that code is called the nine levels of power. And again, it's a philosophy that strengthens the mind, the body, that is derived from ancient Japan, and it's there to guide the ninja. Today, we're going to hear more about that code of conduct, which is called the nine levels of power. And with the assistance of Michael Saito, Shokusugi is now going to explain the nine levels of power. Strength of mind and body. Ooh. Direction of energy. Ooh. Harmony with the universe. Ooh. Healing self and others. Ooh. Premonition of danger. Knowing the thoughts of others. Mastery of time and space. Controlling the elements of nature. Enlightenment. you have to know opponent, your partner well, because this sounds different, and how hold a sword is different. And uh, Michael, could you bring all sword? I want to try to, everything, all sword. <laughs> Thank you, Michael. Break some, right? Okay, all right. Okay. I'm going to uh, show you a couple uh, sword. This is the regular ninja sword. Ninja sword is straight. On the other hand, Japanese regular sword is a little curved. Okay. And as uh, you could see, a little short. And the, the main reason why ninja sword is shorter than a regular sword, because the way how to hold, we always hide the ninja, always for the body, always hiding. So regular sword, this is a different regular sword and the ninja sword. Straight and you know, little curved. And regular sword is sometimes too long, so very hard to cut with the reverse. On the other hand, ninja sword is much shorter, so easy to hide yourself in the behind you, so your opponent doesn't know how close you are and how close he's going to attack. If we, once you show your opponent your length of the sword, he knows how he's going to protect. But if he doesn't know anything, and behind, you don't know what's going to happen. And always the ninja has a cross fight. Reverse cut and reverse cut instead of holding regular. 
That's the main difference. And since we don't have so much practice, so we're going to use a bamboo sword. Sorry. I cannot kill the judges, you know. I mean, ooh, tomorrow I'm going to get to trouble, you know, so. You have it? Okay. And the distance and only short movement. Please take a look. Sorry about short. If you want to see more, please watch my next movies, okay? <laughs> Pay the bill, please. Okay. That's it. That's what I can do for you. All right. Thank you very much. <laughs> Choreography, you have to think about the location. Okay. Here, we have uh, some stage. We could jump up or even uh, some table too. So you have to use all surroundings. But beside that, you have, have, you have to have a knowledge of a fighting skill. And whether you're going to fight with one person, or two person, or multiple, three, four, five, that depends on how you're going to put yourself. And in the movie, you have to read a screenplay. I'm writing a screenplay, by the way, for this book. So if you want to see books, right here, OK? Uh, anyway, script, you have to show every movement, all fighting. And usually, I do practice choreography in advance, even movie start. And as soon as I read screenplay, then I use, I, you know, I call all my students. And the best one, OK, this movie, I'm going to put him in, this man, then we're going to practice together. About how many months? It depends on the budget. If budget is so big, sometimes we practice six months in ahead. And we get certain movement. We put together, I put together for the choreograph first. But after we go to location, well, wait a minute. We could take advantage of this location here, so jump instead of there. And rolling and come here, so flexible. But 80 to 90% you have to set in advance. Some choreographer, they don't do. At the spot, few hours, I don't do that. I did two hours, I know, two months, three months, let them practice so nothing happened. But still, I get hurt. I break my knee. I broke my collarbone. I break the finger. And uh, by the way, last ninja assassin, Rain made a mistake and poked my eyes with a sword. Yeah, but uh, lucky enough. Bamboo sword. But still, paramedics were there, so OK. I was, my, my uh, the eyes were so red, but whew, safe. So you got to be very careful. And depend on the, I told you, partner or opponent, whatever, you have to think, you know, the distance, everything. And choreography looks easy, but very hard. It depends on how much he can do, and how much we have to use a stuntman, how much we have to do double. So Ninja Assassin for Rain, we use six stuntmen. Maybe if you see that Ninja Assassin, wow, Rain did everything. No, we use six stuntmen, to be honest with you. Yeah, and so timing, also location, are very important, and the practice. And depending on, say, if he knows Kung Fu, then choreography is most of them are Kung Fu. I know Karate, Japanese style, then most of them are Karate. If I, he knows, you know, Taekwondo, then most of a kicking technique, you, you can help. It depends on that. 